and I fell asleep and yes again they had to call an ambulance because I was in a severe hypo and they couldn't get me awake anymore and it is so uh, I don't know how to explain that but then I do everything they tell me and I follow it to in the detail and then I just feel as if my body is punishing me for doing a good thing and it makes me scared because then that next day I thought I really don't know what to eat anymore because when I follow my food plan I get unconscious in a coma or in a, in a, I get unconscious and in a severe hypo and when I, when I uh, don't follow my food plan my body is also co totally confused so what on earth do I have to do? And how on earth can I trust my body again? Because you know what happened the next day? Um, the next day I had that glucose in uh, IV of course. So I was already very high in my glucose. And the, the, the ambulance nurse told me. You really need to eat now uh, a lot of slow carbs. So um, she advised to eat a lot of uh, bread and granola. Uh, so I did. And... Um, um, they put it next to my bed so i had to eat it first before i got out of bed but they also put their fruit juice next to it and um and uh, uh soy yogurt and and some other stuff so i had to eat everything um then i got up and at night i had a full meal and i had uh, uh, uh two in betweens um, but what happened then then i got a hyper from 18 exhausting and i just wanted to cry because i think i thought really i'm doing exactly what they tell me i'm doing what the dietitian tell me i do what the, the ambulance nurses tell me i'm constantly doing what you tell me even though i don't get a clue and i don't understand it and still my body is just not reacting as we expect it to and it is just beyond scary um because usually when you are strong and when you are in balance it's just like well when you eat a b follows you know when you want to gain weight it's very simple you need to gain eat more calories than you than you use and then you gain weight when you want to get your glucose up you just need to eat some sugar uh, uh, slow and and quick and then it goes up and when you want to get it down you, you you cut down on it and you move a little more and you drink a little bit more water you know that's that's logical sense but my body doesn't work that way and that is why i get so scared because when i have a hyper for example i get total uh, control uh, uh, muscle control loss so i couldn't stand on my feet anymore i couldn't make the transfer anymore from the toilet to my wheelchair and that was very scary because i've never had that before and i had to call a nurse um, to get me up again and that was so scary to prevent that hypo in the morning. So I'm now uh, setting my alarm very early at five o'clock and I'm going to eat them first. And after that, I, I try to get a little sleep still till my usual breakfast time. So then I can have two breakfasts instead of one. And this morning it worked. I didn't get into uh, I didn't get unconscious so that gives us a little hope that I think okay maybe this will work and during the day um, my blood sugars actually are okay because I eat every two and a half hour because that's what the dietitian says there needs to be two and a half hour between every meal not more and not less so I do that and then I can keep my sugar levels okay um, and uh, they told me just to keep going and keep going and finally my body will find a balance but it will take weeks i'm already doing i'm already in here now for three weeks and it's still all over the place and i'm still in severe refeeding and usually you are in refeeding for three to five days and i'm not out of it by any means um and i'm so tired but um, I just 
need to focus on what I can do and don't panic because I really tend to panic sometimes. I'm just so scared. I just want to cry. Uh, a lot of people who have had eating disorders or still do are consuming a tremendous amount of carbohydrate, okay? And they have some serious blood sugar problems that are underneath it. Anytime the blood sugars are involved, it's low blood sugar, it comes with a package. There's all sorts of cognitive issues, uh, mental uh, derangements that can happen when those blood sugars go down. Um, highly irritable, uh, uh, pushes you out of present time. You're not yourself. There's also some evidence that high ketone levels can produce a state of well-being or mild euphoria. Forcing someone to eat or drink at the end of their life may prevent this buildup of ketones and reverse this metabolic process, causing increased hunger, thirst, and pain.